Okay, something I want to show you real quick is that I have spent the last maybe 25 to 30 minutes working on these thumbnail sketches with um, just graphite. I mostly used a 2B pencil and a 7B pencil um, for this exercise. And I thought that, you know, there might be something that we can do beyond just these quick thumbnail sketches that help us to think about mass shape and um, the large areas of differing value and taking these kind of rough sketches and giving them a little bit more organization. So um, this is something you can do if you have tracing paper. If you do not, don't worry about it. You could probably also use parchment paper um, or you could use your phone and the free um, app called Sketchbook by Autodesk. Um, and so what I did is I just um, kind of clipped a sheet of this tracing paper over my sketchbook. And I picked a somewhat medium kind of value color. So I chose this red um, color that I just had sitting around for a colored pencil. And then I also um, grabbed a marker. I don't have very many markers, but um, I have this kind of dark brown. So I figured this would be a really good color to add in a little bit of a uh, contrast. And what I did first is I would go through, um, let me zoom in real quick. So when I started, it looked like this, right? You could just kind of see a semi-transparent layer over my initial sketch, my thumbnail. And what I did is with my colored pencil, I first traced my thumbnail just in case my tracing paper gets off track. It also helps to keep the ratio of my composition um, for areas where I'm gonna leave the sheet of the um, paper showing through. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is start to look for the brightest values. So I see the tabletop and some of the highlights are pretty much the color of my paper. So what I'm gonna do is outline those areas just kind of quickly and loosely. Um, and what I wanna to try to do here is start to train my eyes to break down these values and try to find the areas where values differ and I can start to find large shapes to simplify the composition. Um, so I feel like I have all of my brightest value areas outlined. Um, so then from here, you're just gonna go through and fill in all the areas where you're not going to, um, where you haven't outlined your brightest value. And what we're gonna end up doing is have these three value studies to go in tandem with our rough graphite sketch. And again, these, these are supposed to be just supplemental and quick, so don't spend too much time on this. Um, and then from here, I'm gonna go in and start to peek through the red and the, pa and the, and the um, tracing paper to see where my really, really dark shapes were um, sitting. And just kind of quickly go in and with the marker, try to find some of those dark values that I saw. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with this. I think I'll leave it there. Okay, and now that we're done with that last one, 
What's nice about this is that you can take your tracing paper and put it up against a flat white piece of paper or background and look at these just as their own sketches. Now, what I wanna point out here is that what I like about what's happening is that my initial sources become a little bit more abstract and it allows me to look at just the design. And this way I can decide which, which one of these compositions I find the most intriguing to maybe develop a little bit further or to take right into my painting. Um, so right off the bat, I feel like this, this one here and this one here are maybe the least interesting in terms of rhythm, in terms of points of conflict, points of contrast. Um, this one especially, you can tell like it's, there's just kind of, it's very dominated by this middle value. And um, I just feel like the composition is a little dull, especially compared to these uh, two middle drawings that I did. And the last one, even though I wanted to kind of zoom out and look at a larger field, a lot of the activity is happening in the center of the composition, which I feel like is a little static and kind of boring as well. Now, looking at this one, this vertical one here, I would say it has some interesting kind of triangular line work um, that moves my eye into multiple areas of the design. I like how the deepest value is not sort of sitting in one place and it's not weighing down the design in any particular area. Um, you know, it's kind of evenly spread out, but it's not, you know, it's, it's not too crowded. Um, and I like the shapes of the blank white as well. I like this big, large triangle here. So this is a, a contender for sure. But I also really like this third one um, for some of those same reasons. I like the rhythm and some of these like larger tri um, diagonals that are coming into the field. Um, I also like the shapes of some of the brightest value, right? I mean, if we look at the edge of this lower white shape here, just the variation of, you know, the line moving up and moving down and having some pretty nice jagged edges is really interesting and dynamic. Um, but then we also have these little island bits of those bright values as well leading up into the bottle. So when you're looking at your compositions, and if you decide to do this extra step with your thumbnail sketches, use them side by side, right? Try to keep everything on the same page because it allows us to make really quick comparisons and judgments on some of these different um, designs. The other thing that's really nice and handy about this tool is that this can also be a guide when you begin your painting, and this offers a very simplified version of your still life um, by giving you some large, simple mass shapes. So try this out. Um, if you're gonna do this on Autodesk, I would make a new layer and um, work on top of your thumbnail. Don't work on top of a photo of your still life. So keep that in mind and good luck and enjoy this process.